Welcome back to College Algebra. Um, in this lecture video, we are going to um, talk a little bit more about transformation of functions. So this is what we left off in uh, from 3.5 part 1. So before I continue to talk a little bit about something called the even odd function, I'm going to go to the homework and find a problem I already got up here. That um that we went over last time to see what it looked like from the from the student's view. So uh, I was a little bit vague about um, the very first step. Uh, determine the more basic function that has been shifted, reflected, stretched, or compressed. All he was asking here is if when you first saw this function, what was the or original function? So as you know, this is a cubic function. So the most basic cubic function will be x. Uh, raising to the third power. Okay, that's all we want you to do. Now the second step, okay, is picking the picture. So this is a positive. Um, the coefficient of the leading term is positive one. Okay, and there's no negative sign right here. So the cubic function will be this one. I'm going to guide you to this, okay? The next step, okay? So the minus 2 here inside the function tell me that I have shifted to the right 2 units. So you, you see that graph just moved? Uh, there is no stretching, there is no reflection, no reflection, no vertical shift. Alright. Okay, so now do the domain which is from negative infinity to infinity expressed as an interval notation so I'm going to start out with the parenthesis negative infinity infinity sign right here comma infinity so is my range negative infinity comma to infinity Alrighty, let me find one that was a little bit, yeah, there's something like this one. It's a little bit tricky. I mentioned it about the reflection part. So this is another x to the third power. I'm going to use a keypad. Try another one. Okay, this is this one. Okay, based on the previous answer, it would be this one. This is a cubic function. All right, so here we go. This step. All right. So horizontal shift. So if you flip this over, there'll be negative x plus five. Plus five means left. Five units. So it moved. Okay. The a. There's not actually. Uh, there's no numerical number other than one, so there's none. All right. So this one is reflection about the which axis? Let me go back here. Uh, let me go back to the previous. Yeah, there we go. Inside the function, if it's inside the function, it's reflection about the y-axis. Reflection about the y-axis. There's no. There's actually no x-axis reflection. So now it got flipped over here. No vertical shift. Now if I submit my answer, it's correct. It's like flipping it over there. Kind of weird how you just do a reflection on y-axis. Now, I'm not going to do the last part for domain and range. Let me graph this. 5 minus x, whole thing to the third power. If you graph it, it is over here. Even though I have shifted, okay, over, but because of reflection, it made me go the other way. So that's normal. So these steps kind of guide you through, okay, what's going on. I'm going to skip that. Alrighty. Let's continue what we were doing last time. Well, continue what we're going to talk about. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mention something called an even and odd function here. Um, it's kind of interesting when we talk about transformation um, along with the even the odd function. Let's say the function f is an even function if f of negative x 
is equal to f of x for all the x in the domain of f okay what does that mean really what does that really mean um, what it's saying right here in the symbol is if I would input a negative x okay and input a regular positive x and then the y value because remember f of x is also representing y so if I plug in an x I get a y if I plug in a negative x I also get a y so if my two y values are exactly the same okay then my function is an even function okay um, we kind of um, mentioned something similar to this before when we're dealing with the parabola um, as I was picking the point um, if I will pretend my vertex here for a parabola is maybe like a two three all right so if I will pick a number um, to the left one place of two and one number to the right of two and what I demonstrated before is where the y value are exactly the same by saying the distance to the axis of symmetry is equal the y values are equal so that tell you that parabola is an even function if I input a positive x negative x and where my two y value are the same okay then my function is an even function even functions are symmetric with respect to the y-axis or something called the axis of symmetry most of the time we say y-axis because um, um, if the vertex is located at the origin all right a function f will be odd if I input a positive x and a negative x then my y value comes out one is positive this is a positive term right here if one is positive, the other one is a negative. Okay. If the two y value has opposite sign, okay, then the function is odd. Not just one positive, one negative. It's actually the same y value. It just the signs are opposite. Then that's considered an odd function, and odd function are symmetric with respect to the origin. Okay. So we said that an equation in x and y is symmetric with respect to the y-axis okay if it's respect to the y-axis which is actually called the even function if we're replacing x with a negative x result in an equivalent equation what that mean is what I mean is if I substitute a negative x for x it still come up with the same thing that same thing as the original problem then it's reflection about the y-axis or the function is even okay the equivalent equation is the same as the output okay if the output are the same it's reflection about the y-axis all right now it will be symmetric the variable we said that equation in x and y is symmetric with respect to the origin if we replace x with a negative x y with a negative y result in an equivalent equation so that's just another way of saying the function is odd okay so if I will simply input if I will simply replace negative x with the x if my y value has an opposite sign same numerical value but opposite sign the function is odd with respect to the origin now it will be symmetric to the x-axis if we replace y with a negative y and the result okay, in the equivalent equation so different way we can go about doing this talking about talking about the symmetric okay we can look at from the even r function perspective or we can do the uh, re symmetric in respect to the xy or the origin all right so let's give this a try okay we can do this in a couple different way um, determine the following functions even odd or neither all right so here is my function and this x is already positive so if i will input a negative x substitute negative x for every x i see 
So that'll be negative x whole thing squared over 2 and then minus 2. All right, if I simplify this, let's see what I will end up. All right, negative x whole thing squared is still going to be x squared over 2 minus 2. So when the output are exactly the same, Okay, put a positive x in there, this is my output. Put a negative x, output exactly the same. That tells you that the function is even. So sometimes I say output, sometimes I say y value. It's, it's, it's the same thing. Okay, y value is the output. All right, let's see what about cubic function, even or odd. All right, so this is already have a positive x here, right? So all I need to do is check with the negative x, see what the output turn out to be. If I substitute a negative x, that will be negative parenthesis, substitute x with a negative x, whole thing to the third power, whole thing over four. So check it out, check it out. Negative x whole thing to the third is still gonna be negative x to the third. Negative x to the third times negative one become positive x to the third over four. All right, so here I input a positive x. This is my output, which is negative output. When I input negative x, my output become positive. So same numerical value, just got opposite sign. So the function is odd. All right. I tried this one, okay? This is already a positive x. So what, what I'm looking for is whether my output is the same or my output, uh, my outputs are the same, but opposite sign. That's what I'm looking for. If, if I don't see either one, that will be neither. Okay, let's substitute a negative x, okay? This is a little bit tricky. Three times cube root of negative x. And that's it, that's all I can do. Okay. All right, let's check it out. Is this right there? Okay, that is how many negative sign right there. Most people will say one, but I can argue negative one to the third power is still negative. So if I have a cube root of a negative one, cube and cube root will cancel it out that negative will pop to the outside. So that will be negative three times cube root of x. All right, therefore, this is positive. This is a negative output. Okay, so my function is odd. All right, but this time I'm not too sure. I'm, I, I don't feel as confident with this answer. So I'm gonna graph them. I'm gonna graph, um, I'm going to just graph the original function, okay? 3 times cube root of x. Alright, so what we're looking for, uh, this is my cubic function, excuse me, cube root function. What we're looking for is the output. Okay, looking for the output, output. Alright, so oh, here is negative 1, and here is a positive 1. My output one is positive, one is negative. Okay, check out with other number. I'm picking whole numbers. I'm not going to pick something off. Uh, eight. Oh, A is perfect. All right. Well, positive eight for X. Output is positive six. Let's go to negative eight. Negative eight. Negative eight. Input. Output is the opposite sign. Negative six. So they tell me the function is odd. All right, let's try a rational function real quick. Okay, remember now, even an odd function is means in respect to the even is even is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Okay, odd means symmetric with respect to the origin. So I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Let me take a picture of this thing. I can explain to you what do I mean by that graphically symmetric in respect to the origin um, 
All right. So remember, I already I pick uh, one positive one and a negative one for x. All right. And my y value said negative one, negative three. Positive three. So what I saying in symmetric in respect to the origin is the distance from that point straight to the origin is the same distance as from this point to the origin. Okay, that's called the R function. Same distance to the origin. All right, that's what graphically it demonstrates. Uh, let me do um, this um, rational function real quick. So this is already a positive x in there. I'm going to substitute for the negative x. 1 over negative x whole thing squared minus 5. Negative x whole thing squared is still going to be positive x squared minus 5. So my output are exactly the same. So this function is even. Now, that does not mean every rational function is even. It does not mean what? Sometimes it does not really mean every cubic root function is even. It really depends. Okay, it really depends. You really got to test it out. Some functions are even and are soluble or just neither. Okay. okay this is an even function. Let me uh, see if I can find a picture here earlier. I just saw one earlier in the homework. Um, let me see. This is uh let me just, this is an absolute value of x function. Okay. Let me see if I can find one. Uh, right here. This is an even function. So excuse me. This is the one over x squared function. It's even because of distance to the y-axis is the same, just like a parabola. Okay, not every time, but for that particular one we're doing right now, it is even function. All right. So let's say let's say we can determine if the following equation has an x-axis symmetry, y-axis symmetry, origin symmetry, or none of those. All right. So these are written in equation form. So what we can do is use this part of the saying to help us. Okay. So I'm going to put it down here so we can all look at it, make it a little bit smaller. All right. So to be y-axis, symmetric with respect to y-axis, we can replace x with a negative x and see if we will still come up with the same equivalent equation. Okay. So this x is going to be replaced with negative x plus y squared equal to 3. Okay. So, are those two the same? Mm, not really. All right, let's see. Symmetry respect with x-axis. If I'm replacing y with negative y, so that y squared becomes negative y whole thing squared. Plus, I'm still there in front. x is still in front. Equal to 3. Now, if I simplify this, negative y whole thing squared is still going to be y squared x still in the front, 3 still there. So that's exactly the same. So this problem will be in respect to the y, excuse me, x-axis. Alright, let me try this one. The origin, which is odd function. So let's see if I replace x with a negative x. So this x becomes negative x. Replace y with a negative y whole thing squared equal to 3. So this is going to be negative x plus positive y squared equal to 3. So does it result in an equivalent equation as original problem? No. So it's not symmetric with respect to the origin. So my answer is symmetric to the x-axis. Okay, that's how we check them one by one. Okay, that's how we check them one by one. Alright, this is a linear function. Okay, this is a linear function. That function right there, I think it's going to be a... See, if I would look at this function earlier, mm, we 
you see, I will be saying y squared equal to move the x over, get negative x plus 3. Take a square root on both sides. y is equal to a positive and negative square root of negative x plus 3. So this one was a square root function. So if I were typing a regular square root of negative x plus 3, Right. And then the second one is a negative square root of negative x plus 3. Well, I'll make my second line darker. I'll do a double line here. Then. So the first one is the positive one. Go that way. This is a negative one. You see? These two are symmetric in respect to the x-axis. If you flip this over, you become that. Okay, that's another way you can do it. Alright, this is going to be a linear function, um, but I'm still going to check it like this, okay? Alright, let's see if it's with respect to the y-axis. Alright, replace x with negative x. 2 times negative x plus 2y equal to negative 2. Alright, if I simplify this, then this is going to be negative 2x plus 2y equal to negative 2. So, is this the same equation as the previous one? Nope. Alright, let's replace y with negative y. 2x plus 2 times negative y equal to negative 2. I think if I would simplify this, that would be negative 2y minus 2. So, that's not equivalent equation, so it's not even symmetric with respect to the x-axis. I'm going to take the positive x and positive y, replace them with negative x and negative y. Let's check on that. Alright, let's see if we'll come up to be equivalent equation. That's negative 2x minus 2y equal to negative 2. Okay, totally different. Right? If I even factor out a negative 1 between all three terms, that would just be positive 2x plus positive 2y equal to positive 2. You see that positive 2 is different than that negative 2, so this is actually not even what equivalent still. Okay? So this one would be neither. So this particular linear function is actually not symmetric to any axis or the origin. Alright, and so that's how we check them for each one of those, okay? Alright, cubic function. Cubic function for this one, I think uh, if I were actually do it by graphing, just kind of show you how to do it a different way. So that's the origin right there. R function. Cupid. Cupid function is odd. For example, I'm going to go down a little bit. Look at these numbers. Negative 3, positive 3. Y value is the opposite sign. Negative 2, positive 2. Y value is the opposite sign. Same number, opposite sign. They tell me it's an odd right there. It's an odd function. What's R function again? R function. Okay, symmetric with respect to the origin. Okay, so some of these I can tell. Okay, what they are. If I'm not sure, I can just check one by one. All right. Um, the very last thing in this particular section is about something called the increasing, decreasing, and constant function. Okay. So the increasing part of a function is or it can be r um, on a given interval the graph of the function will rise from left to the right decreasing part of a function means the graph actually drops from left to right all right i'll show you just in a minute in terms of a picture all right constant part of a function or constant function is actually referring to as horizontal line. So, if you ever see a function 
Just simply say f of x equal to 4. Okay, that is referring to y equal to 4, which is a horizontal line. So horizontal line is always called a constant function. Okay. All right. Only use parentheses for the interval. Interval, open interval means on the x-axis. Okay. So the way saying this is, the way how to think about this is saying on the x-axis from where to where, okay, my function, my graph is actually increasing, decreasing, or constant. Okay. Where on the x-axis, where on the x-axis my graph is actually increasing, decreasing, or constant. Alright, so the best way to do this is actually um, graph it. Okay. But we can also um, do certain things that can help us here. Let me grab this function real quick. x plus 4 to the fourth power and then minus 3. So the minus 3 right here, okay, by, by transformation, minus 3 tell me I have shifted downward four, three places. The plus 4 here has tell me the function has um, shifted to the left four places. So my vertex, my h and k kind of idea is negative 4, negative 3. So now when I graph it, okay. Uh, let's see where my problem go. Uh, right here. Oops, sorry about that. Let's see where my problem goes. Right, so here is my function. All right. So this very bottom right now is going to be negative four, negative three. So from where to where on the x-axis? my graph is increasing, decreasing, or constant. Constant means horizontal line. I don't see any horizontal line here. So let me draw this for you. So it looks like from here to here the function is decreasing. So what does it mean from here to here? Uh, from where to move? From where to where? All right. Left to right, left to right. From negative infinity all the way to negative 4 is dropping from where to where on the x-axis so that's from all the way from the left to this point negative 4 the function is dropping all right. from where to where my function is increasing it got to be this part right here So that will be from negative 4, keep on going to the right. The function is increasing. Remember now, it, this is about the x-axis, okay? Don't be looking at the y value. All right, so more appropriate choice is what this problem is increasing and decreasing. And then we will actually put what we wrote under the increasing and decreasing. Alright. From where to where my function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. So this is right away, this is a constant function. So this is gonna be a horizontal line. Alright, so this whole thing stays constant. So y is equal to negative 8. This is my constant function. So let's go back to the choices here. So you will choose constant, constant from where to where, on the x-axis, on the x-axis, from negative infinity to infinity. All right, let's try this rational function real quick. Remember now, the restriction on the domain, my x cannot be what, positive three here, because that will actually make a 
with the whole function undefined. So we say negative 3 divided by parentheses x minus 3. Look something like this. Okay, see that minus 3 right here? Tell us we shift it to the right. Okay. Alright, let's see. From where to where? So this part is increasing. This part from left to right, this part is actually increasing. This side right here, yeah, this side right here, it does look like, um, uh, let's see, from left to the right, this side is also going upward. So I bet this one will be increased over two intervals. Okay, from left to right, it's going up. The Y value is going up. This one is tricky because of. Uh, the left side is obviously going up, but the right hand side, after x equal to 3, look at the y value. Ooh. Negative 3, negative 1.5, the y value is going up. Negative 2.5 is bigger than negative 2.7, so the y value is also going up. Alright, so this one would be increasing. From on the x-axis, the function is going upward from negative infinity all the way to my negative to my positive three, but I cannot be positive three, okay? Because that's my restriction domain. But I can still use three as my what? As my reference point. And where else is going up? It also is the y value is also go up. The graph is also going rises from left to right from three keep on going to infinity all right so let's find what it is to do um, so we can find what look like that uh, no. give me a minute all right this is one over let's see this is similar enough Let me try some more. Let's see if we can get one. There you go. Alright, so let's try this one. Okay, I'm going to graph it for you. Remember now, this x cannot be negative 4, okay? Negative 3 divided by parentheses x plus 4. Alright, this is going up, this is going up. So we are increasing between two intervals. Increasing on, all right, from negative infinity all the way approaching negative four, negative infinity all the way to negative four, because this x cannot be negative four. All right, let's see if we can do this right. Now the other side of the graph from negative four keep on going to the right. Let's see if we'll take it, okay? Yep. That's weird. So, Mr. Chan, isn't this whole thing is from negative infinity to infinity? It's actually rising. Isn't the whole thing is rising? Y yes, in a way, it is. But you got to you got to realize that it, the function never existed at four. Excuse me, at negative four. So, I have a restriction on the domain. I have to indicate in that. Okay, so that's how the reader know. Yes, left side of negative four is increasing, so is the right side. But but the restriction is actually located at negative four. Okay, by writing the interval notation. Alrighty, so that will be it for this particular.